It's week two of the National Football League, and if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Vikings and the Bills, and it comes your way next on EA Sports. Oh, they indeed love their football here in upstate New York as you get a look inside Rocket Highmark Stadium in Orchard Park. Today, after a topsy-turvy opening weekend, it's on to week two, and we've got a good one here as it'll be the Minnesota Vikings taking on the Buffalo Bills. Hello, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. And, Charles, you take a look at the Bills entering play here. They come in off a good win on the road, and now they hit the home opener at 1 0. And last week's win was indicative of how good this team can be. It was a Two teams here fresh off week one victories who can keep it going as we're underway on EA Sports. And he opts to not bring this one out. The first drive will start at the 25. With the Buffalo offense coming out, and it is Josh Allen who is at the helm. I remember when he came out of Wyoming, the big question mark, could he be accurate enough to be a star in the NFL? I think it's safe to say he's put all of us in our place and put those doubts to rest. He can roll out and run it. He can bomb it over your heads. Everything in between he is an absolute nightmare for defenses to try and prepare for. And when he's on, he's an MVP caliber player each and every time he takes the field. The numbers for him from a week ago, 18 carries, 78 yards, and a touchdown. They put a lot of effort into game playing, establishing this ground game last week, and the reward was a nice day rushing the ball. Help them put a balanced offense out on the field. And that carry is an indicator that this ground game wants to be established again this week. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. But just play number three here on the opening drive, and it's an early third and one. Up the middle they go. Sheffield. And he is going to have the Bills first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert there on third and one. Uh, didn't get it by much, but bottom line, got the first down. Avoiding that three and out, how vital is that on the first drive? To me, it's like the first round of a boxing match. You know, it may not mean much right then and there, but you'd rather not lose it, right? So you want to go ahead and get it, kind of establish something early, and hope it can carry through. From the 44-yard line, here's second and three. It's a game of seven. Brings up second and three. Here's Allen to throw it. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Chapman. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. From midfield, here's Allen. Eluding the pressure right. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. Now a handoff up the middle. Sheffield. He'll work his way up the middle for a gain of about four. Second down. Now a second and six. It's now second and six. Allen. Throw across his body and it's intercepted. Isaiah Simmons picking it off. touchdown well they were advancing the ball they had a couple first downs under their belt but a big mistake there on the opening drive leads to six points the other direction and what a good read that was on his part brandon because it prevents a possible scoring drive with how they were moving things along and it gives the defense the early advantage was going to be a definitely entertaining battle between these units Joey Sly on for the extra point. And we'll see if this rain affects the team's decisions going forward, but they kick it here, and it's good. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air.
And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. So here come the Bills out for their second drive. Now remember, they were just out here a moment ago through the pick six, so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go-around. Yeah, and sometimes, partner, I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field. You're not over on the sidelines dwelling for it for very long. You're not hearing everyone say, oh, hey, you'll get them next time. Hey, don't worry about it. All that stuff just goes right out the window. You're right back out on the field with a chance to atone. Well, someone is certainly having a big game, and while that sack doesn't quite have the splash of his pick six from earlier, you know he's thrilled to be making big plays during a great individual effort today. And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. Now Allen. Isaiah Simmons. Now two sacks for him already here in this first quarter of play. Okay, let's go back a little bit and see if my schooling comes to the front. What's that old saying? Those who forget the lessons of history are doomed to repeat them. That's the same guy who's gotten back-to-back -back sacks. I think a double team may be in order. No gain on the play there. A nice job defensively. And it likely forces a punt situation on fourth. The Bills send the punter out. And no room for air here as his first punt comes from deep in his own end zone. And he's able to get it out of there. Now Austin. It's a return of five following a punt of 42 yards. And the Vikings, they'll be set up well as they take over in great field position, first and 10. So now you've got their offense coming out for the first time with great initial field position. And they are led out there by their mobile quarterback. I tell you what, when he is on schedule for that week, secondaries take notice because you've got to stay alert back there on every snap. A truly powerful arm, one that's capable of challenging any level of the defense on any given play. That's why so many scouts preach arm talent when preparing for the NFL draft. A quarterback with arm strength to make every throw in the book, he's an asset to have in any offense. No gain on the play, it'll be second down. Richardson out of the shotgun. That is into the hands of Hawkinson downfield. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. That one covers 29 yards, first down. So many times in my career I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing, but as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Now it's Richardson. He's got the connection to Moore. So give him two yards there on the completion, and that'll bring up second down. Brings up second and eight at the 16. Now Richardson, he's got his man, London, right side. The result, only four yards there on the play. And they're going to face a third down. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. And Richardson yet again. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Really a solid start here on the opening drive, Charles. He's now 4-4, and they're already in plus territory. Brandon, he's been so precise to start this game. Like we're watching an operation taking place right now. Mess and he'll get in. Touchdown, Minnesota. B. John Robinson, his second rushing touchdown on the year. And the Vikings have taken a two-touchdown lead now. So this offensive unit, yeah, they were solid in the opening week victory, and now they are looking just as sharp here in week two. And that's exactly what you want, too, because you want to get better each and every week and really ramp up as the season goes on. I know it's still early in the season and a lot can happen, but this offense, they look like they're going to be fun to watch each and every time out. Footing always a concern, but the extra points up and good, and that'll make the score 14 to zip. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Buffalo offense ready to go for their next drive. 
They find themselves in a good size hole here and a good size hole early on in this game as they come up on first down. It'll be a gain of just a yard and it'll be second down. 14-0 the score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Second quarter now in Buffalo. It's the Bills in control of the football. Still not on second down from the 27. To throw, it's Allen. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. So the shotgun snap to Allen. And now another one thrown incomplete. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. I know this offense was expecting to do big things, but it certainly hasn't turned out that way, at least not through the first three drives. They're definitely going to have to put their heads together and start concocting some offense that'll move the ball downfield. Here's Austin. Well, following the punt return here, there is someone shaken up. We'll check on his status when we return to Orchard Park. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. It's been a good first half so far. They're up 14 to nothing. Points here that could really put them in command before intermission. Yeah, and it's all well and good what they're seeing and how they're feeling right now. But it's the NFL. How many times have we watch 14 and nothing leads evaporate and quickly? Mm. So how, do we, how have we seen them combat it? Continue to run your offense, but don't back off at all. Don't start looking at the clock. Don't start thinking about, hey, just take care of the football. Keep attacking. Usually the best way to maintain control. We'll see what they have drawn up here. A little bit behind the line. 12 yards needed to gain a first down. On third down, here's Richardson. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Great way to convert on third down there. 21 yards the play. But things are definitely going right for them here in the first half. Pick it down, any down, even third down, no problem. They get a connection there and pick up a fresh set of downs, continuing to move the ball. Now they show Jet Sweep, but instead a run up the middle here. Well, they nearly sprung him that time as he takes this all the way down to the 37. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. They run again with Dillon. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they're coming a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. A pause here for an injured player, and this would be an important one. Von Miller in some discomfort on the field right now. We'll check on his status when we return to Orchard Park. First and ten, it's Richardson. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. I see what they were trying to do there, trying to find some dead space in the middle of the field and take their shot right there. A really good idea, but it winds up incomplete. play and it'll bring up third. Well, I can spin this negative ways. He just got back to the line of scrimmage. But when you really analyze it, he took away a big play for the defense, made it an uneventful run because he avoided a sack and didn't lose yardage. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. I don't care how many times we say it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. 
And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Back to throw. Here's Richardson. Touchdown, Vikings! Kyle Pitts, his first touchdown here of the new campaign. And the Vikings take a three-touchdown lead. Well, I don't think that we're ready yet to say the route is on, but they have certainly looked near flawless here in this first half, and now an extra point away from making it 21-0. Yeah, and your experience led you to say that because we have both seen those 21 to nothing leads come and go in this league, but this one feels pretty darn secure. And here's the other part. Even when people chip away at it, it forces you into being almost perfect on the other side, doesn't it, in order to try to mount a comeback. The extra point by Sly is up and good, and that makes the score 21 to zip. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Back now on offense, the Buffalo Bills. Well, CD, you kind of feel like they're in a bit of a danger zone right here because now you're down three scores, and I know we're in the first half, but the way this... Oh, everything falling apart now. Another one intercepted. And the return here will go to the 31-yard line. Boy, we've seen a lot of mistakes here in this first half and another there on the interception. Yeah, they're certainly starting to pile up, aren't they? Because, let's face it, we expect a miscue here and there, but they're already down three scores and still giving the ball away. If they want to get back into this one, they've got to take care of the ball because right now the way they're playing doesn't say a whole lot for their chances. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. They'll try the left side with Dillon. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. 40 yards rushing for him now, and he's only carried the ball four times. They'll run here with Dillon. Showed off the toughness, but still corralled shy of the five at the six. He'll get two out of that run, and it's going to bring up a second and goal. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Running for the first time with a fullback, C.J. Ham. Call it a gain of a couple. The defense stiffening here. It's third and goal. Richardson looking to throw this. He's got his man. It's taken in for a Viking touchdown. Drake London from three yards out. And the Vikings continue to pull away here in this first half. Well, you talk about a team coming into an opposing stadium and just taking the life right out of a crowd. That's what we're witnessing here. 27-0, Charles. And this defense, they've just looked completely unprepared for what's been thrown at them. And you know they're supposed to adjust series to series. That has not happened for them. So I don't think halftime adjustments are going to help a heck of a lot. They are in major trouble unless they figure out something really fast. The extra point by Sly is up and good, and it is 28-0. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And for this offense, Charles, you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive because remember last time out, they threw the interception on the very first play. And you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well, and they're awfully confident right now. To me, it's time to attack and take some of that momentum back. But make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open before the ball leaves your hand. And Allen going to be intercepted for the third time. Tredavious White with a pick. And he's able to take this one back to the 36-yard line. A nightmare of a first half for him. That's now three interceptions. But Charles, with his talent, if anyone can shake this off and right the ship, it's him. I agree because you don't get to be one of the best quarterbacks in the league without developing some major mental toughness. So I expect him to go to the locker room at halftime, hit the reset button, and come out a new guy in half number two. Alert. Alert. Richardson off the play fake. 
Throw left side complete. That's more. And they'll get this one down to about the 20 yard line. On first down, Richardson. He'll check it down, complete to Dillon. It'll go as a gain of four, and it'll be second down. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Short completion, just four yards, and now two yards to go on third down. Now Richardson back to throw it. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. Anthony Richardson, his third touchdown of the game and fourth on the year. And the Vikings will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. That score that they just gave up there, that's a tough one for their defense to swallow because they've had a tough time through the first two quarters. They really were determined to get a stop there, unable to do so. That makes their comeback hopes that much more difficult. Extra point by Sly is up and good, and that makes this 35 to nothing now. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The Bills going to take over now late in this first half. Well, things for them, just to put it bluntly, man, it has been tough sledding here in the first half, facing that big deficit. The clock is dwindling now. Maybe if they can get something on the board here before intermission, they'll have at least a little momentum heading into the second half. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Now a second and ten. Allen going to throw. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one. And that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They've given him a lot to think about. A lot of different looks. And he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. Now the Bills are going to use the first of their timeouts. Allen now looks to throw. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Second and ten. Now Allen. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. Now right where this set of downs started, they need a full ten here to pick up the first down and move the chains. Now yet another incompletion here as they fail to connect on third. Well, based on what we've seen so far, I don't think you can even call this an off day anymore, partner, because this group we're watching, they are totally out of rhythm, trying to get their game plan up and running. That zero on the scoreboard is glaring down at them with every incompletion. On the return, it's White. It'll be a 41-yard punt. Give them five on the return. And control of the football, switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. They'll indeed start on the ground to run that clock. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. So we hit halftime with our visitors, the Vikings, taking the lead to the locker room. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, we'll get you back to you and Charles in a bit. But first, it's time for a trip around the NFL following an eventful opening week hit. Let's see what's happening in week two. We'll get started over at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in downtown Atlanta. And as you see, they were winners back on Thursday night. Andy Dalton. Three touchdown passes as his guys bounce back from the defeat on opening weekend. From there, let's head west to see what's going on with the Raiders at home in Las Vegas. And right now, they have the lead over the visiting Dolphins. Derek Carr, responsible for the lone touchdown in the game thus far as he's thrown a touchdown pass. Lastly, we're off to the Rocky Mountains, Denver, Colorado. See what's happening with the Broncos. As you can see, the score there in the second quarter. Marvin Mims, a touchdown reception. 
the highlights from the first half, all one-sided. This one got out of hand early, and now you have to wonder how these teams will approach this second half, because this one's already close to being in the bag if it's not already. All right, Coach, thank you very much. As we welcome you back for quarter number three. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. And the half will begin with a touchback. Out come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. They'll begin the drive with a run by Dillon. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Nice run defense presented there. And what I mean by that is discipline. Guys filling the right gaps in the right holes. No one over pursuing and making a very nice play. Richardson now on second down. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. From the shotgun, Richardson. Able to slither by. All that gets him is just a yard, and now it's third down. Oh, partner, just a second earlier, and they might have had him because they certainly thought they were going to close in and drop him behind the line of scrimmage, but he had just enough time to dodge the pressure, and he ends up getting yardage before being stopped. Now Richardson. And the throw there going to be incomplete. And that is exactly what you needed defensively. It's a long road back from here, but that's a good start to the second half as they force a punting situation and a fourth down. He was called on three times in the win last week as his first one here's away. And he'll take it just outside the 40. A 40-yard punt, give him three on the return. And the Bills will take over the football with a first and 10. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And a good burst there gets him seven up to midfield. But no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. He's to the 15. And all the way home for the Bills touchdown. His second rushing touchdown on the campaign and fourth overall. And the Bills are able to at least get one score back. Well, I guess when you look back on it, it was just a matter of time until he popped a big one like that. And, you know, at halftime, you and I discussed it. They had done a nice job on him in the first half. But there were a couple of occasions where it felt like he might wiggle out of traffic and take it to the house. Finally here in the second half, that got done. After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. This taken in right around the goal line. Now a hit and a loose football. But it looks like one of the DBs has it. And they will take over at the 26-yard line. Let's just call that play exactly what it is. Needed because they wanted to get back in the game. And they knocked the ball free. And now they have a chance to do exactly that. They got the chance. Now they have to take advantage. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. From the 20, here's a second and four. They'll keep it on the ground. Sheffield and the Bills are going to be set up with a first and goal as strong running gets him to the nine-yard line. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he maneuvers his way down to the three-yard line. 99 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. 
And now they'll throw with Allen. He will find Diggs in the end zone. Touchdown, Buffalo. A three-yard touchdown pass. And the Bills are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. And all about timing there on that short slant, Charles. Exactly right. That was timed up so well. The route, the throw, touchdown. Here's Bass now for the extra point. It's good, and it's now 35-14. A drive there of just four plays. And it's finished off by the touchdown by Stephon Diggs. Austin elects to bring this out of the end zone. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. Still operating with a comfortable lead despite the score a moment ago as they begin first and ten. The drive starts with a carry by Dillon. And he'll fight forward on the straight-ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. They go play action with Richardson. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. Here's Richardson to throw. To the right side, and he's got more complete. And he's going to come up a bit short. He needed to get to the 35 for the first, but he only makes it to the 34. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And it'll be fourth down. And here's Ryan right now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And the Bills getting set to go. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. We're in the third quarter in upstate New York with a second and ten. Here's Allen to throw it. That's caught by Gabriel Davis. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And that's going to lead to a third down. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Allen from the gun on third down. Flush to, and he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Deron Payne. He's the culprit. Causes a loss of five, and it brings up fourth down. The Bills send the punter out as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. It's taken to the 26. So a change of possession here on the punt. And it will be Vikings ball, first and 10. And now out comes Minnesota. And now you've got the clock winding down here in the third quarter. Your three scores to the good. What's your approach on this drive? Too early to fully commit to playing the clock game. Yet at the same time, you're also not going pell-mell like you would in two-minute offense. This is what NFL offenses call four-minute football. Take the clock out of the game a little bit, wind it down, but at the same time, keep advancing the ball down the field. Second down, here's Richardson. Got London on the slant. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. Richardson out of the shotgun. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Not his best throw there, but where we sit right now in the third quarter, he's had a pretty good game throwing the football. He certainly has, and it's not exactly at the point where we're doing four-minute offense yet, but they've got to think about, I'm not going to say milking the clock, but understanding clock management here on out. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we played three quarters. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports.
And this offense on third down today, they've been very good. Five for seven thus far. This is third and eight. Open man, he's got him, the tight end, Hawkinson. And to the 46, he goes and no further. So he is well short of the first down marker. Only able to gain a couple there. And that's going to make it fourth down. And here's Ryan right now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. The Bills going to take over again on offense. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And, Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers. You would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally... I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. Allen looks to throw on third and one. And that is incomplete. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. Now Allen, gotta have this one. Able to find the open man, that's complete. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. Uh, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. And now he is just two catches away from 1,000 on his career, 998 currently. Work to do here to avoid falling to one and one, but this is first and ten right now. And again, it's Allen. He'll buy some time right. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Now we've got a timeout for an injured player, and oh, this is certainly notable. That's Josh Allen, who's in some pain out there. We'll check on his status when we return to Orchard Park. They'll run on first down. Sheffield, and a short gain here, down to the 22. Brought down by Ed Oliver. From the 22 now, here's second and nine. The backup Stidham, his first throw. And his first throw since coming in is incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense, they're just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. And they'll get to him short of the first down at about the 16. They'll get six there on the run, but it brings up fourth down. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, They've got to pay it off with some points. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Needing the tough yards, they run it with their fullback. And boy, this is going to be close. That mark looks a little short, and he didn't get there. No dice for Sean McDermott in the offense. And the Vikings defense is going to get the football back. Well, their first fourth down attempt earlier was successful. This one backfires for a turnover on downs. I like their aggressiveness. I like what they're doing. They got it the first time they went for it. Why not a second time? I don't think they'll be daunted from attempting it again. If you're on the defensive side of the ball, though, any fourth down stop is a big momentum play. Now a handoff to start it out. Robinson. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Second down and a yard. Robinson with another carry. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. He winds up giving a yard back there, and now it's third and two. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. 
On third down, it's Richardson. Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant, and it's intercepted. And he'll bring it back to about the five-yard line. He had his eyes on the end zone. He got close. At least he set the offense up nicely, but he's probably mad he didn't take that one to pay dirt. I agree with you, and you know he's going to get teased because he didn't get it all the way into the end zone. But if they don't score now, if they don't get a touchdown, he won't just get teased. They'll be glaring at him. How'd you not score? Suddenly, it's first and goal after the interception. A quick change in the situation here. And he is going to go down. Back at the 11-yard line. So they get pushed back to the 11. And here's second and goal. Under pressure, they got him again. Two straight sacks have him backed up now for a third and goal. To throw is Stidham. The throw out wide going to be incomplete. Well, how about the coverage we just saw him break out on third down? Dime defense, blanketed the field with extra defensive backs and speed, unable to find an open hole to complete that pass. Here we go, Stidham on fourth down. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. They can't hook up here on the fourth down pass attempt, and the Vikings defense is going to get the football back. They kept it in the air on fourth, Charles. They ran on first and second down, tried it through the air on third and fourth, couldn't come away with anything on fourth and goal. And remember, in these situations, the field is really condensed. Everything is squeezed tight. So as a defender, you can actually take more chances here because they won't have as much time to throw the football, and a receiver really can't run past you. If they do, they run out of the back of the end zone. Nice job by the D, shutting them down. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. And you'd have to figure they're just looking to burn these final two minutes away and get out of here with a victory. Shedding through the defense. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. 13 yards as the Vikings pick up the first down. Hate to be blunt, but it is just continuing to prove to be the case that this O-line is manhandling this D-line right now. They deserve to roll up their sleeves and show off their biceps because they're doing exactly what you just described, manhandling the defensive front. They've got the leverage, they're powering through, and they're controlling this game. Tackle made there by Matt Milano. Second and 10. They'll run again here with Robinson. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. So the final seconds have ticked away in this Minnesota victory, and it was a bit of a strange game. They were held scoreless through the entire second half, but their first half output... That's enough to carry them to victory. And that's an odd game to watch, isn't it? Because when we saw the output in the first half, you think to yourself, okay, they've got something working here. They know what they're doing. They'll continue that along. But instead, it's goose eggs in the second half. Fortunately, enough of a cushion and enough defense to carry them home. So for Minnesota, it was a great all-around performance as they come out of this one with the victory. And they will head back home next week. Meanwhile, for the Bills, they'll fall to 1-1. One and, one, and they'll try and turn things around next week as they have a date at Soldier Field with the Chicago Bears. I'm Brandon Gordon. Certainly have to thank Charles Davis, my broadcast partner, and our entire crew. We'll catch you next time right here. It's the NFL on EA Sports.